Epiphany, when we celebrate the feast of the baptism of Christ, one of the very important feasts in this season of Epiphany Tide. Welcome to all of you in church and a welcome to those of you who are participating in the service online. Lovely to see you. And we're delighted to welcome today our preacher, Kristin Thomas Dottier, who's been with us many times before, and we're delighted she's preaching today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan, you reveal Jesus as your Son. May we recognize him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do we sit or kneel for our confession. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself 
that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand for the Gloria. <laughs> revealed him to be your son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit. Grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sit for our first reading. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 1 to 7. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 14 to 17. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptized you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat in his grain, into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Christ. to be here and I greet you on this first Sunday of Epiphany in the name of our Lord and Savior, to whom the Magi were led by a star through dangers and temptations to find God and worship him. Peace be with you. Amen. A few years back I was helping out a friend who was moving houses. My designated place to work on and pack was the pantry. 
and among the cutleries, cans of food, burgs of spice and crockery, I found a glass bottle carefully sealed, half filled with water, with a date and the initials of my friend on a handwritten etiquette. Turned out that this bottle contained the water that was used at her baptism 60 years earlier. And through all her life and through all moving, she had kept this bottle with her baptismal water close as a reminder of who she was and to whom she belonged to. Today we are invited to contemplate the story of Jesus' baptism, as told in the story of the Gospel of Luke. And I'd like us to focus on two things in today's texts on baptism. The first being that baptism is God's activity in the world. And the second is that baptism is about our identity as God's beloved children. I think we can draw from what we read about the baptism of Jesus, a precious truth about the meaning of baptism in the life of the church and in our personal lives. We are reminded of this already in the Isaiah text and the story of God's people. Keep in mind that Isaiah's words are spoken in depressing times as the nation is in exile in a foreign land. That's the context of God's promise. And we read, do not be afraid for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And here we already see the invitation and the intimacy set up for God's people, no matter the circumstances. And then we get a glimpse into the early life, or the life of the early church, where the apostles are going out into the world, proclaiming the wondrous gifts that God's Holy Spirit offers those who believe, empowering the new church for the life and mission to come. Let us notice that even this was at a depressing time where the followers of Jesus were being persecuted and scattered over a large area. Luke's account of Jesus' baptism also reminds us about the dangers surrounding God's people at that time. John was creating a movement and certainly interest, speaks truth to power and demands reformation, if not revolution, in the ways power conducts its business. And the whole crowd, including soldiers and tax collectors, and even the ruler Herod, listened to John's condemnation on the wicked and unjust ways power is being executed. And here I'd like to add that it's important to remember that John's speech was not all fire and brimstone. For it also says, and with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. John's popularity and visibility did not protect him, however. The ruler Herod, who like all the Herods in the Bible, is egotistical, insecure and petty in bed with the Romans, and definitely clueless about God, gets him locked up for his uncomfortable message. Free speech has never gone down well with weak and corrupt authorities. 
And then we come to the baptism of Jesus. I want us still to keep in mind the two points about baptism. Namely, God, baptism as God's activity and the consequences that activity has on our identity as God's beloved children. At the baptism of Jesus, we get to live another epiphany moment. Last Sunday, it was with the, the Magi from the East who recognized the divine in Jesus. This Sunday, it is God who addresses Jesus as my beloved son. And this is the identity part of baptism and the intimacy part. It teaches us who we are. God's beloved children and confers upon us the promise of God's unconditional regard. And why is this important for us today? I'd like to think that in an era when so many of the traditional elements of identity construction have been diminished, we change jobs and careers with frequency. Most of us have multiple residences in different communities over our lifetime. Fewer families remain intact. And then there's a craving to figure out just who we are. And in response to this craving and need, baptism reminds us that we are in rela relation to whose we are. We are God's beloved children. And just as God proclaimed to his people in exile, in Isaiah's words, you are precious and honored in my sight, and I love you. These are the words during Jesus' baptism, and then God opens the heaven and sends the Holy Spirit and reveals to the world that this is God's beloved Son. The baptism of Christ is one of those deeply rich stories of the Gospels in symbolism and images that the church has taken to heart and built essential theological ideas around. And those ideas have not the least taken form and being, been expressed in art and pictures, like the one on our worship sheets today, where the motive of Christ's baptism appears in the contemporary work of Sergei Fyodorov. In the fresco in Rochester Cathedral in Kent, we step into the baptism of Christ at the River Jordan. John the Baptist is there. The Holy Spirit in form of a dove is there. Other characters from the salvation history are there. And we read God's voice and his words. And this artwork captures in remarkable way all the three persons of the Trinity at the same time. The Son being baptized, the Holy Spirit descending, and the Father speaking from the heavens. And the lower part of the fresco is also very significant. Namely, it depicts the baptism of King Ethelbert by no other than Saint Augustine, as well as the baptism of the people of Rochester emerging from the River Medway. Depicting biblical scenes and biblical stories in diverse historical settings has been a hallmark for Christian art through the centuries. It shows us how Christians have at all times seen the parallel between the biblical life and their own lives all the wonderful Renaissance paintings where the gospel stories are set in the beautiful landscape of Tuscany come to mind. And even 
tiny churches in Iceland have altarpieces with Jesus and the disciples show up with local folks going about their daily duties in landscapes familiar to the people who would come to church and would never have any way of visiting the Holy Land or any other land than their own, for that matter. So in the fresco from Rochester Cathedral, the artist makes the connection between Christ's baptism in the waters of Jordan and the baptism of the local people in the river Medway. Just as Jesus was claimed by God as the beloved son, the people of Medway and all Christians at all times find themselves belonging to God's family through God's act in baptism that is carried out in their own sacred waters. I'm still thinking about my friend's baptismal water she kept in a bottle as a reminder of God's activity in her life and her identity as God's beloved child. That water was probably not from some special fountain or well, but rather from a tap in her local parish church. Her parents brought her to receive the sacrament of baptism. Yet through God's work and the Holy Spirit, this water became the symbol and the foundation for her life, grounded in God's promise to redeem her and summon her by name. So as we gather here today and find ourselves in this wonderful season of epiphany, where we still enjoy the glow from Christmas and the eternal and generous invitation to walk with the Magi from wherever we come, to join the crowds at the river of Jordan. May we open our hearts to the gift of the Holy Spirit. May we once again open our lives to the gift of Christ and take God's presence in the world to heart. May we once again claim the identity of God's beloved children that are always in God's care. May we confess God's presence in our lives and enter the new year with the promise of no matter how depressing the times are. God is with us and God calls us by our name. Amen. So we affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. These prayers are written by Simone, who wasn't able to be here today. God of love and compassion, we come to you with the will to offer ourselves to you at the beginning of a new year. As we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, we contemplate the open heavens. Give us the grace, day by day, to remember our baptism in Christ and the ever-present possibility of a fresh start and new beginning in him day by day. We give you thanks that in the last two years, and like today, we have been able to worship, we have experienced partaking of the Eucharist in church and online. During that time, our community of Holy Trinity has deepened its experience and our sense of belonging to the family of Christians in the whole world. It has deepened our sense of being part of your whole church of being a member of the body of Christ. Send your holy creative spirit on every single member of the community so that with our chaplain, Canon Daphne, with Christine and all the priests who are part of that expanded community, we may together build on that experience, move forward and find new ways of belonging more actively to the whole Christian family to reach out to our fellow Christians who worship in difficult circumstances. Give us the grace to be able to play a part in building a church of compassion and inclusion. God of love and compassion, as we give you thanks for our own baptisms, we lift up to you members of our families, members of our communities, friends or people we may know who have not been baptized and we ask you for the grace to be better channels of your love, that we may be able to encourage those people to come to you. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Merciful God, we pray for peace in the world. We give thanks for the United Nations, for the many charitable organizations, for all those who work to alleviate suffering and poverty in the world. Merciful God, we know you are there in the midst of the suffering. We pray for all political leaders that they may not be tempted by a pursuit of power and pride, but have the will to work for the common good, for justice, for peace between nations. We lift to you the delegations from the US and Russia who are meeting to today and tomorrow here in Geneva and later in Brussels. Give them both the will to listen, the will to hear the other person's point of view. May there be an atmosphere of respect and serenity between them. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the world as it struggles with the COVID-19 pandemic. We give thanks that in our Western countries, vaccination has lessened the risks of serious complications. But many people in the world still have not got access to vaccination. Merciful Lord, inspire all leaders of rich nations that they may take decisions to help poorer nations more effectively and give them the means to fight the pandemic. Inspire all people with the responsibilities, but also every person of goodwill to be more generous in sharing the world's resources and finding ways of contributing to help. Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Lord, we pray for the sick and those caring for them, especially Charles, Lucinda, Denise, Michelle, Isabel, Douglas, Sue, Nathan, Maya, David, Rosabel, Jose, Francois, Marianne, Silvio, 
Anna, Valerie, Francis, Remy, Jenny, George, Emmanuel, Lawrence. Let us take a few moments to name in our hearts people we know individually who are in special need. May your love flood their lives with hope and healing. God our Father, we pray for the faithful departed, Cynthia Palazzola and John Taylor. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Bless and comfort their families who mourn. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. of his government and peace there will be no end the peace of the lord be always with you, and also with you. we share christ's peace with each other and we wish christ's peace to those participating with us online be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the word, a new light has dawned upon the world that all the nations may be brought out of darkness to see the radiance of your glory. And therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. holy indeed the source of all holiness grant that by the power of your holy spirit and according to your holy will these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, 
forever and ever. Amen. Do we sit or kneel to say the Lord's Prayer together. Gathering our prayers and praise into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. We offer and present to you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, our selves, our souls and bodies to be a holy and living sacrifice. Grant that being present together in heart and mind at this Holy Communion, we may now be filled with your heavenly blessing through the redeeming grace of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, in outward signs of bread and wine, you have made known your presence among us. As we unite with one another from the places where we are, may your communion be fulfilled in us now through the work of the life-giving Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of new creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just a few notices for today. First of all, a very big thank you to Christine. It's a wonderful sermon and lovely to have you with us. So, look forward to seeing you soon. A reminder that tonight we have a choral Eucharist at six o'clock. No COVID certificate needed, but you will wear, need a mask throughout. Uh, usual services uh, during the week, Wednesday online at 10 and Thursday in church at 10 o'clock. And then next Sunday we have choral matins at 9 o'clock and then 10.30, sung Eucharist and um, messy church at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So any children aged about 3-ish till 11, very, very welcome. Um, we will need a, a mum, dad or grandparent or some adult with them throughout to enjoy it with them. And, but it should be a great um, service, so do try and come if you can. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, very sadly, John Taylor died last week, and our thoughts and prayers are with Margaret and the family. The funeral will be on Thursday the 20th of January at 2 o'clock in church. We're hoping that it will also be on Zoom, and we will be able to confirm that shortly. And just someone else to keep in your prayers this week, Charles Graves sadly had a fall and has broken his femur. He's now recovering, so just keep him in your prayers. Um, next week, delighted, our junior church has started today, and next week they're going to join us um, at some point during the Eucharistic prayer. So it'll be lovely to have them back in our worship from next week, and we'll welcome them then, and we will pray for them then at this very special start of the new year. I don't know if we've got coffee afterwards or not. We have? Thank you, Joe. Sounds like a new form of musical chairs for COVID, doesn't it? But I'm sure we'll manage with a plum. Thank you. And so we stand for our final hymn, God is Working His Purpose Out.
the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.